friends. Thank you. Thank you so much for stopping by. I, I needed this boost. I needed the boost to be in the beehive and to have uh, know that there are friends out there. Some days are just harder than others, aren't they? And I just woke up the last couple days worrying about my older son who's a paramedic in uh, Portland and I just I I needed a, a, a ray of sunshine is what I needed. <laughs> And so I have been spending um, the last day uh, kind of dusting and reorganizing. We, I had to have the windows washed and, um, you know, to get the screens out, for G to take the screens out, I had to clear off all the, <gasps> all the windowsills that have all of my gigaws on it. And I decided to move things around uh, just to give myself a fresh look on life. Just trying to figure out how to bring a smile to my face. So um, I've been doing that reorganizing, uh, redecorating, although it's the same stuff, just you know when you move things around and you put them in a different spot, oh it looks it looks so nice. I didn't know how much I loved that. <laughs> so that has been preoccupying my morning. Uh, it was so beautiful this morning. I mean the sky was just that crystal blue color and now I've had to shut all the windows because the smoke has rolled back in. I went and used my inhaler, coughing up a lung. <laughs> yeah, it's no, uh, I'll be glad when the smoke is gone. <laughs> it's, um, it's tiresome, but we are surrounded by uh, several different fires, and depending on which way the wind blows, it's, it, means whether you have clear air to breathe or not. And the sunsets have been spectacular and that's the real kind of the irony of it all is that when we have forest fires the sunsets are gorgeous. The smoke makes the sunsets gorgeous. <laughs> it's so ridiculous isn't it? <laughs> but I have been you know, somewhat lax in, in, uh, I've been trying to catch up on, on the, um, comments, and I, you can't know how much I appreciate all of your, um, I know that you think of me as your support, I can't tell you how much I think of you as my support, um, it is just, it's a full circle, it's a full circle. I did want to answer a few uh, questions that I, I, I know I, I read them, but I have not answered them. <laughs> and what happens a lot of times is that I am, um, usually early in the morning I'm down in um, the TV, our little TV room where I cross stitch, and uh, that's, I'll sit there and read comments and answer either then or late at night before we go to bed and um, someone asked me a question about something that's upstairs here and I'm just too damn lazy <laughs> too lazy to run up and down the stairs to, to look for what that person has asked me for so I, I know that I have some questions that people have asked me and I hope I will cover them uh, if not, ask it again. <laughs> Eventually you'll get an answer. <laughs> but um, I did get a question about my curiosity um, cards. Uh, on Instagram, and here's, here's the thing, I know, I know there's like 140 people that want to, to be on my Instagram feed still, but I, <clears throat> I can't figure out well, the real confusing part to me is why someone 
who has zero posts on their Instagram has like 200 people following them. I still don't understand that. Why would someone follow someone who never posts? You see? So because I'm leery, because we know there's challenges out in social media world, if I see something off like that, I'm reluctant to uh, say yes. I'm a chicken. I'm a buck, 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 chicken. And so that's, that's why some of you who may want to share on Instagram might be frustrated with me. And so a couple times I've had people message me on Instagram and explain their situation and, and then I've gone ahead and, and we've opened that door. But otherwise I'm kind of a chicken when it comes to social media. You wouldn't think I would be, but I am. Um, but on Instagram, just so you know, every so often I pull a curiosity experiment card and I share it with my little Enzo. And um, where is, oh, oh, there's Enzo. My little Enzo. My little Enzo. It looks just like my Enzo. I miss him up here. Actually, it's here that I miss him the most um, because he always came up here uh, and hung out because I have a treat. Um, I have a, and I still have it here, you know, we're over a year <laughs> and I still have his little treat thing. But um, so I have Enzo and I uh, pick a card out of a stack of cards and the cards are, um, called the curiosity experiment and I bought this stack of cards at the stitching post in sisters so you'd be able to get them there also and they are uplifting and amazingly sometimes when you draw a card it like speaks to you right then. It was like the card you needed. And and so the cards are in this pile and then I just randomly pick one out, not in any order, and I read it. <laughs> and then I set it up there for like a week to, um, I have a little easel that I set it on and um, I ponder what the card is saying to me. And the card I drew Oh my gosh. Sigh often and try it with sound. <sighs> hmm. It does lift something emotionally. So I'll put this on my little easel here and then Enzo will sit on the stack of them that I have in the little tray. And I'll ponder it. So you can get that at the stitching post. I also was asked about the crown that sits up on top of this lamp. Yes, I have a crown. And the crown was given to me, oh, it must be, it must be like three plus years ago, maybe. I was in Denver, Colorado. That was the home base uh, for the filming of the quilt show with Alex Anderson and Ricky Timms. And since I wrote for them on the daily blog, I um, was a guest. Like, I've been a guest a couple of times. They, they use me like if they need to fill something in. <laughs> Because I can just literally talk about anything. <laughs> and so um, I was a guest on the show, and I was, they, every show has a couple of guests, and I was the uh, guest with Ann Shaw, who does spectacular 
um, quilts and you'll have to I'll try to put links down below um, for all the things that I'm talking about <clears throat> I'll try to remember and um, in fact I should just write myself a note right now uh, quilt show and and Shaw she is oh I've wanted to take a class with her at um, uh, the Quilters Affair for several years, but because I also uh, teach at that event, it's usually she's on the same day as I am teaching, so I don't get to take a class. And then this year for the first time, oh, okay, I'm not going to, well, maybe I'll just go there a little bit. I did get into a class, oh, and then it was all canceled. Okay, I'm over. I'm going <sighs> to sigh. Try it with sound. Huh. It does it does release tension. I love those. I love those. Um, well, back to the show. So the quilt show had um, I was a guest and I had told the producer <laughs> that I wanted to I I wanted the quilt show to send me to Paducah. I'll do a segment on Paducah quilt show. And so Ricky and Alex on the show um, said, although they couldn't send me to Paducah, they would give me a crown. <laughs> and so that's the crown that's on on my uh, lamp up here. And I um, I. Every so often when I want to be queen, I wear it. Yeah, I wear it. <laughs> okay. Next question. Oh, someone asked me what size my hexes were. And the hexes I'm currently doing are one inch hexes. So these hexes are one inch hexes. Those hexes were all flowers were all made with one inch hexes. And unlike what I said in the previous video about I use these square papers, no, these are not square. They are hexagons. Duh. Oh man, I couldn't believe it when I, I saw that and I went, oh, what a dummy. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so they're one inch hexagons and I've got four done. I'm working on week three, which is summer. And this project has sparked me uh, like no other in recent weeks, I should say. I'm very excited about this. And it has something to do um, with the limited amount you have to do. It's not very much. And it's fun. And it has caused me to dig through my stash, which has been phenomenal. I don't have a giant stash, but it's kind of tucked everywhere. I didn't realize it. And I was looking for something because uh, I wanted, you know, I could have swore I had some K-Facet fabrics that I thought would be great for hexes, but I couldn't find them. And then there was this little hat box sitting over underneath the hexy station, and there they were, this whole, whole stack, stack of, of not only, uh, well this is the Tula fabric I bought, but all the rest of this is K-Facet fabric that is awesome, going to be awesome, awesome. Uh, so I'm very much enjoying that. So if you are interested in that, you can jump on board anytime. And it is um, on Spring Daisy uh, Stitching. And the link is on my blog. But she's on Instagram. And every Sunday not Saturday, like I said, every Sunday she posts the theme of the week. And all you have to do is make two hexi flowers that week, which incorporate that theme. 
it's really satisfying <laughs> because it's not like you got to get a whole bunch done. Just two hexi flowers. And it's portable. Which brings me to my... Everyone's been asking about my hexi lunch pail. Where did I get it? Where did I get it? I didn't know, and I'm going, I can't remember. And I thought, well, what's on the bottom of this? And on the bottom, I did buy this at So Many Quilts in Bend, Oregon. I don't know if they still have them. It was a while ago. But this is also a product of Motor Fabrics. So it might be that you'd, um, you'd on Amazon, or you'd be able to Google it, and somebody, if, if somebody quilts in Bend, Oregon doesn't have it, somebody will have it. And then another person asked me, what's inside this box? Well, there's, um, there's the Hexi template. There's a couple of different sizes of Hexi papers. There's the one inch that I'm using. There's the three quarter inch. There's a thimble, you know, the stick on thimble. Um, they're like a little silicone stick on thimble on the end if you don't want to wear a thimble, you know, uh, so you don't keep poking yourself. There's this box I got from Sue Spargo because <sighs> Sue Spargo, she doesn't mess around. When she does a hexi, it is tiny, 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 tiny. I want to show you how tiny this is. It's, it's so tiny. It's like... It's like three quarters of an inch, and she does half inch hexes. So I naturally want to feel important and like I know what I'm doing. So I have this little hexagon plastic storage box for hexy papers that I got at Sue Spargo. I have a pair of glasses, I have this stiletto. You know, it's a little pokey thing if you don't want to. Get too close to the iron. Not real fond of it, but you know, I'm gonna keep giving it a try. I have applique needles and um, glasses, please. Glasses, please. This is Sandra Leichner's number 12 applique needles, and I got this from Sandra Leichner. And I took an applique, needle turn applique class from her, and she is extraordinary. So you're going to have to Google, I'll, I'll put a link down below, because oh, to applique like her would be amazing, amazing. pair of glasses, and I've got these, these um, sponge pens. That you put water and starch in. I have bottles, a little, little bottles of starch. You only put like five drops in here with a bunch of water. And um, glasses. Let's see. And then my little, my little uh, binding, little red binding clips I use. Now I got from all the the. Um, comments. <laughs> Brain fart! From all the comments, a variety of different ways to do hexes. And there are a gazillion ways to do hexes. And each way is going to be someone's favorite way. So by no means am I the end-all be-all of the hexy queen. But the way I do it I do it because I like it, and I have tried all the other ones. So it's not that they're wrong, it's whatever works for you. And this, this is the Hexi Queen. Missy Carpenter of Traditional Primitives, and let me tell you, 
um, this book is extraordinary because it is page by page full color pictures of how she does her hexes with the starch basting method. And I'm telling you, if you've ever been at market and gone to uh, Misty's, um, uh, Missy's uh, booth, traditional primitives, your mouth will just drop open. I mean, <laughs> your mouth will just drop open. Saves you time, energy, and effort when basting. So this is well worth getting. <laughs> Which brought me to, I had to get it because Misty had it. And I ordered this from her on uh, her website. I'll link it down below. And it is a hexy-shaped ironing board. What can I say? It'll make your hexies better. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll try to link all of that down below. Um, so I'm trying to think, was that all the questions that I remembered to answer? I've sent out the gift cards for the winners. I was contacted by both. And... Now, the winner of, where is that? Where did I put that book? Oh, here it is. <laughs> the winner of this fabulous, fabulous book. Oh, I wonder if there's a hexy quilt in there. Oh, Tree of Life. No, these are all, all uh, machine. Oh my gosh. Look at this quilt right here. Oh my gosh. Isn't that amazing? I don't want to bend the binding on this. So the winner of this fabulous book that was donated is Clay O who said we enjoy quilting with you in the beehive and we would love to quilt with the divas so Clay O be sure that you contact me before the next time I do a video which probably won't be for like a week, five days or so. And um, either email me your um, mailing address and the if you go on the YouTube site, the main site of Quilt Roadies, and you click About my and, and click the email, it gives you my email address. People keep saying, there's no email address that you have to have to click on it. Um, and it will give it to you. Otherwise, you can message me on Instagram. So, Clay O. Let me hear from you. Another big news for, for and sisters, I'm trying to, I'm trying to just, you know, I'm trying to do this without a bunch of notes and I'm I'm trying to use my brain uh, to keep it sharp I want it to be sharp but my neighbor uh, Kelly Ray uh, Kelly Ray Roberts is um, an artist and she also opened a shop here in Sisters and when you come next year, and you will be coming next year, um, you'll want to stop by her shop because two of her friends painted this stunning, stunning mural on the outside of the building. It's, it's unbelievable. 
but she has changed the name of her shop. Um, it's only a, it's only a, a barely a month old, so you know she gets to do what she wants to do, and so the shop is now called Marigold and True, and um, yeah, it sounds right. Yeah, it sounds right, and so um, you're gonna want to visit that, and you can actually go online and and if you go on Instagram and look up Kelly Ray Roberts, you'll get to see. Uh, some of that um, gorgeous mural that was painted. I mean, people are going to come to Sisters just to see that mural and take a picture with it. <laughs> yeah, it's that pretty. It's that pretty. Okay, so on to the next thing here. The next thing is I was sent some Quilty Kindness. I'm not going to show you all of it because you'll have to go over to Stitch Roadies to see the other half of it. But SJ from New Mexico sent me a box that blew me away. And you have, you're going to have to go over to um, Stitch Roadies to see the bulk of that. People are. It's amazing. It's an amazing world. You know, I I can, can get pretty down. All I have to do is spend some time worrying about my kids up in Portland, and I I can get pretty down in the dumps. And and then I'll read a comment from one of you, or I'll get a card, or someone will reach out, and and my heart is lifted. My heart is lifted. But look at this. Look at this card coffee. How did she know that Jen from Spunky Jen on Instagram and and um, a stitch in the bluegrass? Yeah. How did she know that um, we'd be doing a coffee stitch for September? <laughs> I love that. Enjoy after coffee. Oh, this is so cute. This is actually fabric that she cut out the motif, you know. But she sent a pattern that I could use as a giveaway. It's brand new. And the thing I love about this pattern is it's actually designed by somebody I know personally. And you can follow her on um, Instagram. Mostly people follow her to see her baby, her toddler. He's, he's got to be a toddler by now um, uh, when he wakes up in the morning. But you know who I'm talking about, Jaybird Quilts. So you can Google that also. But um, I love, 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 love her patterns. They are um, they're fresh, uh, they're contemporary, but they're traditional in... The, their motifs. Um, she's just really good at putting design and quilts together. And so SJ has given this quilt pattern called Chopsticks, Chopsticks by Jaybird Quilts as a giveaway. So if you're interested in this pattern, in the comment below, use the word chopsticks. I love how creative some of you are. And some of you, it totally cracks me up. Some of you said, like, I couldn't think of anything. So I just said the word. Hey, that's A-OK. -okay. That's A-OK. -okay. But this quilt uh, pattern, let me show it to you again a little closer. I mean, I love it. Chopsticks. So if you're interested in this pattern, in the comment below, use the word chopsticks. That brings me to another thing. It has become, it's way, it's way too hard for me to figure out the giveaway if you don't leave the comment on the actual video. And I know some of you uh, want to just leave the comment on Facebook or on my blog, but I, I link that for the convenience of uh, 
looking at it at a certain time, but if you're going to actually want to enter a giveaway, you do have to go over to the YouTube channel and um, put the comment there. You don't have to watch the whole thing on the YouTube channel if you've watched it on Facebook and or the blog, but you have to leave the comment on the YouTube channel um, because it's easier for me to let the comment generator not have to compile things and do it by number, but let the comment generator do the picking. Okay, I've been talking, so let me have a sip here. G makes iced tea from scratch. Is that a thing? From scratch makes iced tea? I mean, he boils the water, tea bags, you know, puts lemon in it. Boy, he makes good iced tea. I'm going to do an unboxing right in front of you. I hope this isn't going too long for you. But um, I'm going to do an unboxing. You don't know how special you guys are to me. I, Because I wanted to share this excitement with you. And so I've had this for a day and have not opened it. But I am participating in the Sue Spargo um, <laughs> brain fart. No, the Sue Spargo squash, um, not squash like you're squashing a bug, yeah, but squash as in pumpkin, um, stitch along that she's going to be doing. And so I ordered the kit. Now I didn't order all the threads that she, um, packed with the kit because I have so many of them. So I knit and picked. Oh, I can't wait to see this. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. So there's the bag of wool. And from what I understand, from what I understand, this is going to be a total size quilt of 15 inches. That's so doable. That is so doable. And it's free. The stitch along is free. And so you can do it and use your own stuff, or you can do it and order stuff from Sue. But the pattern itself is offered on Instagram. So, oh, and here's the threads I ordered. Oh my gosh. And the sparkly threads. What else? What else is in there? Oh, beads. I got beads and but oh my gosh, that must be gimp. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. This is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. And I kind of look at it as something small. And it's kind of like the hexes. It's one little block. And it's only going to be 15 inch total square. That's not a big quilt, you know. Um, oh, gosh, that is... Oh, I just have to take it out and let you, let you feel it. is that yeah I need more handwork what the heck if it's gonna keep me sane oh this is called the squash squad kit isn't that fun so, so my agenda let's see that was that was just way too fun what else? Oh my gosh, it just seems like I've been talking forever. 
my goal today, for the rest of today, is to make the binding. Yes, I have another quilt, you know, that needs binding. And this is the thing about quilting old quilts, is that the chance that you have the fabric left from the 90s, I mean, maybe some of you do, but the chances that you have the fabric left to make the binding. So you need to think about that. that. Here's a tip. When you make a top right now, you need to make the binding right now. And I had started doing that, but obviously not back in the 90s. Um, because then you'll have the binding. It doesn't matter if the back doesn't match perfectly, but the binding is kind of part of the front of the quilt, and so it's better to make the binding when you make the top, and then just store them together for as long as you want. But I didn't on this particular quilt. So this, some of you will recognize this fabric. This is the back. It's like a stained glass. And I showed this to you before. This is those blocks that my dear friend who passed away made. And so it's kind of an old fashioned, it's not really old fashioned, but it's, you don't see this color too much in the quilt store. And so I took this over to the Stitch and Post to see if I could find anything that would work as a binding. And you know, the Stitch and Post has a lot of fabric. And there was only one piece that even came close. And let me see here. Um, there was a bigger piece over here I wanted to show you. Oop. Oh yeah, here it is. So this piece here was the only fabric that even came close, but you can see, I don't know if you can see, but I can see that this is like 10 times brighter than this. I mean, this is kind of a dull mauve, pink, burgundy color, and this is like bright. So what did I do? Just so you know, quilting fabric is amazing. When you go to a quilt store and get quilting grade fabric, it's worth every penny. I soaked this piece of fabric in a bucket of bleach water for a day. Yes, I wanted to dull this up a little bit so it would not be so bright. After a day, the water was still clear. Yeah, the water was still clear. And I was afraid to add any more bleach because I thought it'd eat holes in my fabric. Then I laid the fabric out in the full sun. And it got just ever so slightly lighter, but it is still a lot brighter. But that's okay. I've decided that's okay. So today I'm going to make the binding for this quilt. And that's as good as it gets. Yeah. Oh, it'll look good. It has a little bit of gold in it. And it's the same basic colors. It's just a little bit brighter. And then I solved my other problem. And that was this quilt. So this quilt, remember I showed you this one. This was a quilt that I took, um, I took a class at Quilter's Affair back before I was teaching with Jackie Erickson, and it was called Wonky Log Cabins, and it was just the funnest class. My whole quilt group signed up for the same class. And you bought a bag for $25, you got a bag of scraps. 
and you made wonky log cabins out of it and then you put it together in whatever way you wanted and so this was the way I I got the bag of solids made my wonky log cabins per Jackie's instructions and then I chose a, a navy background and just kind of sewed it together well looking for fabric for a binding that matched this particular I didn't want to I did not want to use a bright color one of the one of the color wheel colors I didn't want to use that on the outside I wanted it to be um, more modern and so I was looking for a navy blue that matched this navy blue nada none and so I was sitting there in the shop going what am I gonna do you know, and you don't want to force yourself to do something you're not comfortable with because you're not going to like it. And all of a sudden, boom, I had a light bulb moment. I had a light bulb moment. And I said, I could face this quilt. And so I found this fabric, this kind of navy blue, it's kind of got a modern design on it and decided I am going to face this quilt because it's a modern looking type quilt more contemporary and that's so then I, it won't show how I what I bind it with it won't show so that's what I am doing with that I think I've been talking too much yeah but I think I might have covered everything. This week, um, I'm going to layer the baby quilt for my cousin. I won't get it quilted before I head to Portland again. But um, I'll have it layered and ready to quilt. And as I look around, this room is starting to look pretty darn organized <laughs> but the pile for binding things is getting bigger and bigger yeah boy I sure I'm happy that I checked in with you guys I feel much better I feel like I have some control over my world and um, the smoke is thicker <laughs> so I won't be going outside but um, but I feel much better. And I thank you guys for that. I thank you guys for that. Because I know some of you are talking back at me at the same time I'm talking to you. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So I hope I'm looking forward to um, next year's uh, Quilters Affair and Quilt Week. And I hope I see a lot of you there. Um, is it hard to believe it's September 1st? It is hard to believe that we are into September. Um, but you know, it's okay. We'll get through this together. Thank you again. Have a safe, safe September and keep stitching. Thanks for watching. And be sure to like and subscribe on Quilt Roadies.